When I rebooted this channel, I told myself I was going to keep away from the fighting game stuff as much as possible because I already talk about that endlessly elsewhere. But sometimes... I can't help myself. Battlemaster is a Japanese PlayStation game made by Taki and published by Hamster in 1998, but then also re-released as a Major Wave 1500 series game by Hamster again in 2000. I believe the Major Wave series is a line of budget titles, much like the more famous Simple series, but I was unable to actually confirm this. It definitely seems to be the case at least. Now, the developer, Taki, I could only find two games they worked on, Battlemaster and Acid which is developed in 1999 and also major waved in 2000. I'm glad they had another crack at it because Acid has a lot of interesting advancements on what we get in Battlemaster. On the face, you should be able to tell that Battlemaster is a fighting game, but let's ignore that for now, as hard as it may seem. Battlemaster is a fascinating collection of visual ideas and effort that far outweighs its budget. Somebody at Taki had some real brainstorming moments and they were unable to bring it to life because this game was being made off seven dollars and a half eaten bag of chips. Look at this intro. It only has two shots and it intercuts back and forth to pad out the length of the voiceover. Obviously there is something they are trying to get across visually but they are only working with what they have. Then you get to the second intro and ooh boy. Get used to tubular imagery because it's an important thing in this game. The logo flying mad close to the screen, the wireframe mecha fighter, the character names, and just the ugliest 3D texture. This is so... awesome. I don't even think it's so bad it's good, I legit love this. It's not like anything else you're ever gonna see. The splattering of styles and ideas with the kinda rad vocal theme behind it. It also runs out of footage and starts these rapid jump cuts to fill out the reprise of the chorus. I must impress how much I non-ironically love this. I think it would be easy to write this up as low quality or patched together, but I think it's still good in that context. It's something unique, even if held together by spit and a prayer. Oh, and if you think a dive into the intro is making a lot out of a little, just you wait. I need you to take in what actually booting up Battlemaster is like. Battlemaster. first got to this screen, I just kind of let it rock. The compressed 3D rendering of what looks like some sort of post-apocalyptic bombed out colony on an elevated rock above an endless sea, tethered by a tube system with this jaunty bop behind it. It's evocative and nothing like any other fighting game I've ever played. It's also worth mentioning that, and this is incredibly relevant, I don't speak or read Japanese, so everything written or spoken is a complete mystery to me. And that's kind of dope here, because this game is already so mysterious. Like, like, look at this menu screen! What is going on here? <laughs> it also helps that there is literally no information of this game anywhere on the English-speaking internet. Uh, I could not find a crumb of walkthrough, guide, or general conversation about it. So. Let's go over how to actually approach Battlemaster. 
Your first option, the Art Deco Golden Statue, allows you to talk to the person at each location who is not the person you're fighting? They kind of look like off-model versions of them in most cases, but they're not the fighters, I don't think. After your brief talk, then you get the option to fight them. The mechanical gear-looking thing is some sort of option menu for Eleni, the only fighter you start with. I haven't figured out what's in the treasure box yet. So, to the right there are two swirling something or others. These are the transportations to different locations. Top one, we'll call it White Tube, gets you to the next location, blessing you with another sick 3D render and song. And the bottom one, we'll call it the Red Tube, takes you to what I refer to as two-player islands. I think this is how you play multiplayer, but since you start off with only Eleni, you can't do that yet, or maybe my emulator doesn't have a second controller plugged in, I barely understand how to use Mednafen, and I barely understand how to use this game. All these options have such killer visual flair to them. Going to the options menu gives you this unique loading screen of a mecha wireframe. The loading screen before a fight is this psychedelic fly-through of hollow crates and bending after images of the fonts. When traveling through the tube system, the animation is slightly unique, as it briefly shows through the cutaways of the tube the place you're coming up to next. There is this strange sense of design to Battlemaster. It doesn't have a style it picks and sticks with. At best, it has a post-apocalyptic cyber-industrial vibe to it, but it also feels like it's just throwing shit at the walls as well. But that's not a problem, as everything it's throwing out is really cool. I don't know how else to describe it, it's like a beautiful mess. All these industrial groove songs and 3D renders and strange splash arts combine to make something really unique and fresh feeling even though the edges are incredibly rough. But eventually, you must play Battlemaster. And it's strange. A 2D fighter set on a stage of two JPEGs of different deep fryer temperatures and no blocking, no jumping, and no crouching. Before the fight even starts, you get a legitimately cool feature, the ability to test your buttons. There's no training mode in this game, so you can use this to figure out what your character's attacks are going to look like. You have three attack buttons that I will charitably call light, medium, and heavy, but rarely do they feel like that. Circle usually does feel like the fastest and square is the slowest, but it's not exactly universal, I would say. The last face button, triangle, is either a throw or a counter. I was never truly able to tell. It allows you to sideswap your opponent. Now, L1 and L2 open up a new suite of moves when held down, giving you three new attacks and a dodge on triangle, either a high or a low dodge. I don't know how the dodges work exactly. There is no distinction for attacks to be highs or lows, so it might literally work as though the dodge movement of your character model is an accurate attempt to move out of that hit detection. I don't know. Like, most characters seem to have a good high dodge, but then Randy gets real close to the ground and his might be the best? Totally unsure. Walk speed is abysmal, and you can't really act out of it easily, so it ends up feeling like it's gummying up your inputs. Thankfully, forward and back dashes are much snappier feeling. Now since there are no combos or special moves or anything, Battlemaster has a same move penalty to stop button mashing. Not like this strategy is all that effective because even your fastest poke is somewhat clunky feeling, but every consecutive hit of the same attack significantly decreases how much damage it does, meaning that you want to be changing up moves constantly, even if it's just between two of them. So long as you don't do two in a row, it won't trigger the same move penalty. All of this in your hands is pretty lumpy. But I would be lying if I said that there wasn't somewhat of a rhythm to it. Because movement options are strictly for retreating, there is this ebb and flow to attacking. Hit stun isn't long, so after being struck with an attack, you can go for a dodge to avoid the follow up attack, and reasonably take advantage back by having it whiff. But if you go to dodge a move with a longer startup, it will punish the dodge attempt. I'm not trying to make it sound like there's a really deep strategy here, but there is at least the hint of something that's going on. So you travel to each of these mechanical colony things, you defeat the four other fighters, and then... I don't know what to do next. There isn't a story or anything I was following, so once I unlock all the fighters, I don't see an obvious next step. When you defeat someone at their town, you get the option to fight them again, as well as what looks like a two-player option at that location, but with literally being unable to understand how to get a second controller working and no ability to back out, I actually softlocked myself every time I went for it. 
Also, the two-player logo you unlock has a blue background as opposed to the red one at two-player island. Does that mean anything? I don't know. I was never able to access the treasure box menu, and when looking over the character information page, I never did see any way to customize their moves. Like, it seems like you should be able to. The attacks do have experience levels to them, but I never sat down and grinded my way to the next levels of them. Also, who is Garrett? It just looks like some sort of controller binder function, which isn't in the game anywhere else because there's no options menu like you would see literally any other game. I just, I don't know exactly what you're supposed to do with the game after that, and to be honest, the answer might be nothing. By all metrics we use to commonly talk about games, Battlemaster is bad. It lacks any form of polish, it has the fighting game system that is below average at best, and it is a confusing bundle of esoteric options. But I kinda love it. The mystery, and I do not mean the mystery in the sense that it is a game in a different language, but the mystery in all of its decision making, like its bizarre menu system or the feeling that the game is prominently featuring Robotech-ass mecha designs but never gets anything, is all very interesting and grabby and it really sticks it with you. I hate that I'm about to say this, but it reminds me of Dark Souls. Look, I'm sorry, jeez, I know, I'm sorry. It does! One of the key things behind Dark Souls' influence was Miyazaki's childhood reading books and manga and all of them being like beyond his comprehension, so he couldn't really figure out what was going on all the way, and he had to use his imagination to backfill everything. And that's how I feel about playing Battlemaster. There is something here, especially with the weird tube system post-apocalyptic world, but it's beyond my comprehension, and I am the one filling in the blanks with my own imagination. Just because Battlemaster is quote-unquote bad doesn't mean that's not without merit. I could easily see myself being influenced by playing this with its strange, cold, industrialness, weird world, and honestly kinda bitch in soundtrack. It's not good, but I'm glad I played it, and I definitely won't be forgetting it anytime soon.